Hi, we've got uh, 10 horses for irishracing.com hunters to follow over the winter months. And they're a mixture bag, some pr promising young novices and unexposed horses who might be graded winners in the future and others who might just be handicappers who'd be capable of winning a couple of races in the north. But hopefully they'll all represent value away from the obvious. The first horse um, to follow is number one, Fassar Vega. Now this one is obvious and not a secret. It's probably the best horse that Willie Mullins has ever trained, he reports, and he's got plenty to measure them against. Fassar Vega, unbeaten in bumpers, won the champion bumper, well back 50 to 8 favour on terrible ground at the Cheltenham Festival and followed up at Punchestown. They're going to go straight over hurdles. He's favourite for the Supreme. All roads are going to lead towards that race. I think they're going to be mortified if he gets beaten on the way. And although he's sort of 9 to 4, 5 to 2 for the Supreme novice hurdle at this stage, which seems a ridiculously short price, when you're dealing with someone like Willie Mullins, who really knows the time of day with his horses and rarely over eggs the pudding with regards to what they're capable of, um, I think Fasal Vega really is one to follow in all the grade one races coming up. Horse number two, Coconut Splash. Evan Williams made an, and very expensive to follow chaser. Uh, five defeats last year in warm company. I had a really good bet on him first time out this season in October and he again just proved a bit one pace but basically he was a bit tapped on the ground at Weatherby he needs three miles soft ground a really galloping track I think he's going to win a big Saturday handicap under Adam Wedge this season horse number three Iron Bridge now this one cost a fortune um, had small field novice hurdle form last season for John Joe O'Neill he reappeared at Carlisle on Sunday at the end of October in what was one of the hottest novice chases for the track. 7-2 to the field. He was a strong and well-back favourite. He jumped well in the main once he'd warmed up, given a very patient ride by John Joe O'Neill, came storming through up the hill. The front two were 15 lengths clear of the rest. I think it's form to follow, and I think Iron Bridge is going to be a graded performer in the coming months. Horse number four from the same race at Carlisle, Harpers Brook represents a yard, Ben Pauling, um, who Irish Racing did an excellent stable tour of the other day. Um, his horse is a great big strapping chaser on looks, won a couple of times over hurdles last season, but he jumped and travelled like an absolute certainty in that Carlisle race. He traded long odds on him running. He looked to have them all completely stone cold before Iron Bridge powered past him up the hill. As I say, I think the form of that race will work out really well, and Harpers Brook is very much one to follow. Horse number five, Elvis Male. Now, Elvis Male's trained by a yard in the north, Scotland, Nick Alexander. He's got some lovely young horses, and Elvis Male, in his early days, was a real hard puller who took plenty of settling in his hurdles, but he's every inch a chaser on looks. He's much more settled now. He came out and absolutely bolted up in the north at the end of October, jumping superbly. He didn't win by that far in the end, but it was one of those races, if you watch it back and you'd backed him, you sort of knew he'd won for the whole race and he was in complete command despite only winning by a couple of lengths. He'd probably go up five or six pounds for that, but I think he's the sort who'll hold his own in better company. And I also think he'd probably be seen to better effect when he's ridden with patience in better races on Saturdays. Horse number six, Holly of John Joe O'Neill. Now, John Joe O'Neill's these sort of McManus horses, very much ones to watch in the market. And Holly was a huge drifter on her seasonal reappearance. Um, and Julie got a very negative ride from rear on the wrong part of the track, briefly looking like she might get into it coming to the last, but not really knocked about. I'm confident she's being lined up for one of these big Saturday handicaps or maybe a handicap at the Cheltenham Festival. Um, she's going to be pretty useful. She still needs to settle down a bit and jump a bit more fluently, but that'll come with time. She's only had a few races and she's very much one to follow. Horse number seven is Kintara. Now, Kim Bailey is another stable going really well. And this six-year-old has already been called a few names by punters. She's been turned over at short prices, 8 to 13, 11 to 4, 1 to 2 and 1 to 2 in four runs over hurdles last season. Seemingly very green in front. I'm hoping it's greenness anyway. But because of that, she's going to get a pretty generous handicap mark, one that underestimates her natural ability. And I think probably click in time and it'll be one to follow once her tensions are switched to handicaps. Horse number eight, Gelino Bello. Well, Paul Nichols, absolute genius with these novice chasers. They all jump incredibly fluently. 
This one was a very useful hurdler and made a smooth start over fences when making a winning reappearance at the end of October. I think it's going to be easy to place this one. Uh, Nichols will probably find a race under a penalty before stepping up in class. And this one's hurdling form suggests should be making an impact at the highest level over fences. Horse number nine, Island Run. This one trained by Philip Hobbs, a young hurdler who's going to be a chaser in time, looks every inch a chaser, needs a test of stamina that hasn't had yet over hurdles. Was very strong in the finish when winning at Wincanton in January, still looking raw and inexperienced through the race and then failed to land a blow under a negative ride into handicaps at Fontwell last March. I think Island Run is going to improve, perhaps one to follow when sent chasing. And finally, horse number 10 to follow, uh, Imperial Esprit, Harry Fry, a trainer I really like. He places his horses carefully, doesn't waste the runs, doesn't overface them. Uh, he's well worth following himself. He's got a good strike rate. And this eight-year-old impressed when winning over fences on his chase debut at Yatoxter in October, well backed after nine months off and jumping superbly, given his inexperience previously. He then did not disgrace himself under a quiet ride at Foss last last November. I think he's the sort who's got a lot of scope to improve and he should be shooting up the handicap this winter.